Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is lecture five of uh, Power Systems One. I hope uh, everyone is safe and healthy and uh, everything is good. So, can you hear me? This is lecture five of uh, Power Systems One. Okay, perfect. So, I'm sharing my screen and I think yeah, you can see my screen now. If there is a technical issue, please let me know before I start. Um, so today's lecture uh, is about three phase systems and the components of transmission systems or transmission systems and power system operation. So these are the three things that we're gonna discuss in today's lecture. Um, if you remember, in the previous uh, lectures, we talked about the generation, um, the different types of, of uh, sources, uh, power plants, we have renewable, we have conventional. Um, and then I, I talked about uh, the fundamentals of, or basics of AC circuits and single phase uh, circuits. Uh, in today's lecture, I'm gonna introduce the transmission system, okay? And also uh, the distribution system along with the power system operation. How to operate a system, how, how to uh, re like regulate the voltage, uh, uh, the different power system components in a, in a substation and so on. So this is the main uh, objective of today's lecture. And at the end, uh, I will introduce the basics of three-phase systems. I will remind you about uh, store delta connections, uh, how to calculate the, uh, the power in three-phase systems, uh, the relation between line voltages uh, and line uh, and, and phase voltages, and same thing for line currents and phase currents. Okay, so this is the outline of today's lecture. And let me share my uh, slides. Okay, so in the beginning, I'll discuss power transmission. So uh, on highways, you see like high powers, you see power lines. This uh, figure, I think many of you, if not all of you have seen it, uh, when you travel uh, from a city to another, uh, to another city, when you, um, when you actually drive your car or vehicle on, on highways, you see, I mean, these high towers. And I, I, as I told you, we build these high towers to, uh, isolate the line from the ground. So we transfer power over long distances from sources to loads using transmission lines. And for high voltage transmission, we have to use uh, good insulators. Otherwise, the, the air itself, if, if, if we are like only on air, it may uh, it may actually break down and we may have connection between the line and ground. That is why we increase the height of the tower in order to uh, provide enough material, enough air, enough you know, uh, distance between the line and the ground and make sure that there is no short circuit or uh, there is no uh, current path from the line to the ground. Power systems are interconnected systems. So we don't have this uh, single source, single load concept in power systems. Like the system I discussed in the beginning of this course, we had like one power plant, step up transformer, transmission line, and then step down transformer near the loads. No. Our power system is not like that. This is the simplest 
way to represent a power system, but our power system is interconnected. We have different sources. And we have many transmission lines. So this is the transmission system or transmission lines. And then we have also many loads, not a single load, we have many loads. And because of the interconnection, we have high reliability. What I mean by reliability is the interruption time uh, or interruption duration and frequency. So the interruption duration is very minimal and the frequency of interruption is very low. This is what I mean by reliability, okay? Our power system in North America is very reliable, uh, very powerful, serves not only one country, but many countries, millions of customers are served. And that is why they invested billions of dollars in this power system in order to make it reliable. Okay? Of course, we have some remote communities and some areas that are not connected to the main grid. So imagine this... Uh, this block diagram or this schematic representing the North American uh, power system, there are some areas here that are away from the power grid, and those areas can be supplied uh, like locally. So we build like a micro grid to a small power network like this, and this power network is isolated. It is not connected to the main power system. or we can, uh, remote, this remote community can be supplied from the main grid, okay? Or uh, like, but here this supply will be very expensive. I mean, the cost would be very expensive. Um, otherwise, as I told you, they may have their own local uh, generation uh, to feed the load. They have, uh, they could get, some, instead of actually connecting an electricity line to this microgrid, we may connect a road to uh, transfer or to deliver the fuel to this microgrid and supply its local loads. But anyway, our, our focus on, uh, in this course is not to study special cases. Okay, so this is, this is a, a microgrid, this is a remote community. Not all remote communities uh, are, are isolated. Many of them are connected to the uh, main power grid. Some of them are isolated. Uh, similar to, for example, uh, submarines. I mean, uh, uh, like if we have a marine, this marine is, is actually a micro grid. It, it could have more loads than the loads in a, a remote community. And this, this marine could, 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 could stay, uh, you know, under uh, sea or you know, uh, could, could, could be actually isolated from, from, uh, from everything for, for, for months and years. Uh, so those submarines also represent uh, microgrids, okay? We have some mines, and those mines also are not connected to the grid, and, th and those mines are, are some, like, most likely are temporary, they're not permanent, you know? We, like companies discover, let's say, uh, minerals or gold or oil, whatever, uh, the natural uh, resources, they discover it, they build camps for their crew, and, and for those camps, they have to supply the loads. So they, they build a remote community, uh, a, a microgrid to supply this small remote community, which is temporary. It is not a permanent remote community. It is just to do a job and then leave, okay? But our focus in this course, again, is on the main power network. Many, we have many power plants, we have many loads, we have uh, like a lot of transmission lines uh, connected in parallel, supplying uh, single load or multiple loads uh, so, uh, so, so that we can guarantee high reliability for the operation. Okay. Uh, in the beginning of this course, also, I discussed with you the advantages of using high voltage, okay? And I could 
uh, explain, uh, you know, why uh, why we uh, transfer power at high voltage, and what are the advantages uh, of 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 uh, of this of this high voltage transmission, and the relation between the high voltage transmission and losses. This is something that I could explain. Also, I talked about the voltage drop. So when we increase the voltage, we, re we reduce the losses. We reduce the voltage drop, okay? And in the previous lecture, when I talked about the, the, the complex power flow between two nodes or between two systems, let's say system number one, system two, we found out that the maximum power that can be transferred between two buses is equal to V1, V2 over X, one, two the reactance between uh, the two buses or the reactance of the transmission line connecting the two buses. So as we increase the voltage, we can increase the maximum power that can be transferred over a single transmission line, okay? So this is what I mean by high transmission capacity. And as you increase the power that can be transferred using a, a, a transmission line, we reduce the right of way requirement. What is the right of way requirement? Because when you build a transmission line, you need to get a lot of permissions. Okay, you need to get, uh, you need to sign agreements uh, with the landowners. I mean the farmers. Okay, uh, so and also you need to get permissions from the government to make sure that it doesn't affect or it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect the environment or or uh, this transmission line doesn't affect the um, the nature somehow or the the natural the, the, the natural life uh, that is actually uh, by the uh, that that is uh, I mean the, the 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 wild animals and all these things because when you build a transmission line and it crosses a forest you have to trim you have to trim the the, the, the trees you have to cut them because those trees may connect the transmission line to ground. So let me plot it in a different way. So if you have a transmission line here and, and it is passing through a forest, so this is a tree, I hope you can see it. So you have to cut this tree. Otherwise, this tree will reduce the distance between the line and ground. Okay, so we may have a short circuit like this, or we may have a connection. Remember, the air is used as an insulator, and that is why we increase the height of the power. When we have trees, the height, the air between the line and the ground redu reduced, especially if this, like, if, if, if there is rain, uh, if there is, like, if, if this transmission line is, is near uh, a post or near uh, like uh, the ocean or, or or a sea, then we will have some chemicals or some uh, you know acids and salts accumulated on the, the the line itself and in the in the air, and this will reduce the ability of air to isolate electricity. Okay, so we have to trim uh, we have to trim trees. We have to uh, affect the environment somehow, okay? So by increasing the high voltage, we increase the power. And as we increase the power that can be transferred over the transmission line, we don't need to build many transmission lines. We don't need to build many transmission lines. And as a result, we reduce the right of way requirement. The agreements we need to sign with landowners, uh, environmental, uh, stewardship, uh, like, uh, I mean, stewardship, uh, organizations, all these things we don't need to worry about, or we are, at least we can reduce it. And also we reduce the capital cost. We reduce the capital cost. Why? Because as you increase the voltage, the, the current will, will decrease. So as you increase the voltage, the current will decrease and the cross-section area of the conductor carrying the current will, 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 will decrease. And this is a lot of money because the cost of aluminum is very expensive. And, or if, you are, if we are using cables, then the cost of copper 
is also very uh, expensive. So uh, we reduce the capital cost by by increasing the voltage. Of course, when you increase the voltage, you have to invest more in the insulators. But again, the cost of, it's a compromise, uh, and again. Transferring more power will accommodate many uh, many problems or will solve many problems and reduce the, the operating costs very megawatt. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about the equipment. In the in the first lecture, I told you there are four there are four uh, components in any power system. We have the generators. We have the transformer. We have transmission line and we have the loop or the distribution system. Okay. These are the four components. Okay. But again, these components are not the only components we have in a, in a power system. These are the bulk components, the main components. For instance, the load itself here represents a city. And inside, inside a city, you will find many cables, many uh, transformers, many, uh, many regulators, and so on. So here, when I talk about the equipment, I talk about, uh, I mean, equipment uh, other than the main equipment, or I mean, equipment that, that may not, uh, uh, I mean, secondary equipment. Equipments that provide ancillary services, okay, and they are needed. I'm not saying these equipments uh, we can get rid of. No, we need them. We cannot have a reliable operation of the power system without these equipments. So we talked about transformers. Okay, there are voltage regulators. So I told you the voltage across the load should be regulated. We cannot allow the voltage to drop significantly below the standard minimum value. And uh, the, 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 the deviation, the, the maximum deviation allowed by the standard is 5%, plus or minus the rated value, or if this power system is serving a remote community or a rural area, then we allow a higher gap or a higher deviation, up to 10%. But we cannot uh, you know, accept any under voltage beyond 10%. So the maximum voltage can, that can be applied on the load is 110, and the minimum is 90. This is the minimum voltage that is allowed. Okay. Urban cities, the, the, the power quality is, 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 uh, is more restricted, and we have a lower gap. The division is plus or minus 5%. For rural areas, it is 10% because of the long cable that we need to, uh, or the long line that we need to, use in order to supply the customer. So if we have a customer here, we can we could actually have a cable of five kilometers from the, the transformer to supply to supply a single load. But in urban areas, all loads are uh, adjacent or close to each home. The density is huge. I mean, the load density is huge, but the distance is, is short. And that is why we can achieve this target I mean, we can achieve uh, a voltage regulated within plus or minus 5% from the rated value. This is in urban areas. This is in rural areas. Okay. But anyway, we need voltage regulators. And those voltage regulators, we're going to talk about them in details when we uh, explain the different types of transformers. So we regulate the voltage using uh, transformers or capacitor banks. We can also use capacitor banks to regulate the voltage. Of course, we have lines and cables. These are uh, uh, one of the main components in any of our system. We have circuit breakers and uh, isolators. I didn't talk about these as one of the main components, but they are needed. We cannot run a power system or operate a power system without a circuit breaker because if a fault happens, if a fault happens here, then you have to check the line. Otherwise, this line will, will break out. <laughs> Not only the line, also the transformer, the power plant. So we have multiple layers of protection. 
to make sure that the system remains intact after a fault. And there are many ways, there are many sources for faults. If we go back here, I told you that some transmission lines are, are, are built uh, through uh, forests. And those forests, there are many animals, wild animals. Some animals like a squirrel or bear or wild cat, okay? They climb the tower and they touch the, 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 the cable or they touch actually the line and they make a short circuit, okay? So we have to disconnect this line if the fault is permanent. If the tree, uh, if the tree under a transmission line is not trimmed, again, this is a short circuit. So we have we have to disconnect the line, and the only way to disconnect the line is we have we need to use a switch, and this switch is capable of uh, disconnecting the line when it carries current. This is something that I'm, I'm going to explain uh, later in today's lecture. We have protection relays. These are the brains of the protection system. protection system. We have chunk and series reactor and capacitors to ensure good power quality. Power quality. Okay, to maintain power quality. We have shunt and series capacitors. If you remember from the previous lecture, I talked about the usage of shunt capacitor banks to correct the power factor. So if you connect a capacitor, uh, in parallel with the load, we can enhance the power factor and reduce the reactive power flow through a transmission line. We have flexible AC transmission devices. We call them FAT devices. Okay, what's going on, guys? Those are power electronic based I just want to devices, from the not static devices or passive devices. So, shunt and series reactors uh, and capacitors are static, passive. Video, okay. To control them, you need to use mechanical switches. You need to use mechanical switches to decrease or increase the capacitance or uh, the uh, the inductance uh, of, of the device under control. But fact, those fan devices are based on power electronics, uh, switches, either beyond signals, so they are more uh, flexible. Okay. And uh, also, uh, or so three or four they provide of us who are many services other than reactive power support or active power support. Most others they can control the active power, uh, the active Most power flow between different buses. And you know. uh, so as you can see, we are, as they are the more you are nowadays. They are the not that expensive. As are going to have like mobile yeah. processing. Okay, okay, now let's look the, uh, at the business components business. inside a substation. Classified as dull normal, we are welding contractors. Okay, so inside the substation, rice farmers own we have of mobile phone the primary side, pest controllers, coin, and, and we have the secondary side. About and inside and inside do not work out any any substation, number one, the heart of the substation is, is a transport. Who do work is teacher. So if we go back to this circuit, if we go back to this simple circuit where we uh, indicated four main components for the power system, this part, this part here is a substation. So the transformer here that you see connecting the generator to the transmission line is a substation. So it is not a simple, uh, you know, a simple uh, device or uh, Still you know, uh, a single system. transformer just connecting the generator we to the line. No. Network we have different components connecting this transformer. Of course, some of okay. our to the primary side and Nearly the secondary side. Percentage. As we know, any transformer has two sides. Over 10 so if you look at the primary Again, side, these people we have a taller. Our average of work, the uh, uh, median, we, we can have like a taller power here, as you can see, which indicates that this is the high voltage side. On average, on the secondary side, we see like a, short, uh, like a shorter tower, so this is the low voltage side, or it could be the other way. 
if this transformer is connected and the next thing is aligned to the distribution system, system then the substation will be a step down if we are connecting a generator to the transmission system then this substation will be a step up uh, substation okay so we have the primary side we have the secondary side a and b in the value of our we have Most uh, of power lines, those power lines. So here. We did not receive any We have ground wire, eighty percent the blue of one. Us are first generation and the ground wire is essential we well below uh, when we supply distribution systems. And try American when we supply distribution cars. systems. And All that is why the primary side here is high voltage and the low side here is high voltage. Because single phase loads they need ground. Most okay. of our there is another reason uh, behind the usage of this ground wire is to only 18 uh, of disagreed with the statement uh, it, it is to you know uh, of us will tell you that our wives are a act as a surge arrest money than we are so if there is lightning we have if there is lightning the first in other words line of defense will be the grounding wire without working for will be the grounding wire. the lightning will strike so the grounding wire because it is at the top of the top comfortable okay it is at the top of the top at the tip of the top so the lightning will find we will find the shortest path to ground energy. to dissipate its energy. There is a huge energy in the light uh, in, in lightning. So this energy will strike first the ground wire and then dissipate through the grounding system. If we don't have this ground wire, if we don't have this ground wire, then the lightning power will strike the body of the tower and this body of the tower is made of steel. Right? The steel is not a good conductor. Um, is only not a good conduct fire, uh, and here we have the concrete base of the tower many of us hold advantage again the concrete is not a good conduct it has a high resistance so the power of this light will go through the tower and the concrete base and it will destroy only the base of the tower or our spouse where we attend to private uh, okay. elementary or private so to protect the tower we have to have a ground wire to compensate or to accommodate the lightning power this is one thing so we, we protect the tower and also we protect is extremely important the, the lights uh, the insulators and our the insulators and, uh, that connect the line to the tower so suppose about two we have like a cloud here and this cloud we and we have the power here. Yes, we have the power here, and we have another power here. But we have three lines. Okay. So the lightning is far away from the tower, but it could strike the line itself. Maybe phase A or B or C. And the, the power, the power of this uh, lightning will go through the wire, which is made of aluminum, and then destroy the insulators. We have insulators connecting the line to the towers. So we will actually lose the, 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 the conducting line. We may also lose the insulators. Okay. So this is another uh, benefit of the grounding wire. It provides us with uh, a ground we feel that our point of finance to supply our loads is during normal conditions seems to make much and during money abnormal money conditions if we have lightning then it will protect the tower protect the insulators and other things our sons and men in general have okay. a take of economic plan. Uh, we have overhead lines they should not need subsidies Number three, subsidies those are the overhead lines what would be the idea we have voltage transformer Number four, yeah, so this is the voltage transformer. This is not uh, similar to the, tra the power transformer in the middle of the substation. This voltage transformer is, is used for measuring. Okay. You cannot just connect a voltmeter to a high voltage line. Okay. We need uh, a voltage transformer with insulators in order to uh, have safe measurements and uh, supply the voltage uh, readings to our protection relay or to our monitoring system. Number five here is the switch. It's here. This is the switch. This switch isolates, isolates the circuit when there is a fault, but it does not isolate the circuit when there is current. Okay, 
the current through the line should be zero first before we activate the switch. So this switch is is not capable of disconnecting the circuit when the circuit carries current. When the circuit carries current or when the circuit supplies a load. Okay. First, we have to uh, have like no load in the line and then uh, open the circuit or close the circuit. So what is the benefit then? If it doesn't isolate uh, the circuit when it carries current, the benefit of this switch is to provide protection to the personnel who are working in the substation when there is a fault. So when there is a fault, we use the circuit breaker element number six, the circuit breaker here, to isolate the fault. Even if the line is carrying current, and of course, uh, the line will be carrying current and huge current, by the way, not just uh, the normal current. The current could be five times the rate of current when, the, when, when there is short circuit. So the circuit breaker is capable of doing that. Okay? But after we disconnect the circuit, okay, we need to isolate the line and discharge any uh, any charges accumulated on the, over the surface of the conductor. In order to do that, we need to use a switch to isolate the circuit from the high voltage side or from the low voltage side, and then connect the line to ground. This is the benefit of the switch. The, the circuit breaker is not equipped or is not designed to do this. Okay, so we have the switch. Uh, this is for protecting the personnel, isolating the circuit when the circuit is, is full, not hot. Uh, number seven, we have current transformers. Those current transformers, they are used for measurements, similar to voltage transformers. Okay. Uh, then we have lightning arresters, number eight. The lightning arresters have the same function as the grounding wire. Okay. They protect the insulators inside the substation for any over voltage or over current due to uh, lightning. Okay. We have the main transformer, the heart, the heart of the substation. Uh, we have control building here, the power system engineers. Uh, they said monitor the system, control the power flow from one bus to another bus, uh, receive dispatch commands from the central control unit, from power system operators uh, such as IE, so on and so on. Number 11, we have a security fence to make sure that no animal can trespass and enter the substation or damage any equipment. So this is the is based on defense. once expected level of net worth. The person's income I believe is everything. as strong but this is defense. of how much that person should be worth. And then we have secondary bar lines, number the 12. Ones income, the higher one's net worth is expected. So these are the, the, the components in, inside a substation. And by the way, inside this substation, we have a grounding system under or beneath one the substation. More than there are more many more grounding so wires. People who are older should have accumulated more wealth than that connect the equipment who are younger. and make sure that for most people in any uh, over voltage or any current uh, due to lightning or due to faults and for most people uh, is this debated safely to ground okay? so the resistance there the resistance of the ground under uh, the substation is very low it is not as the resistance of the typical ground uh, you know through the path of the transmission line so the resistance here could be 100 volts how can someone or be more, but the resistance example, of the ground under the substation is much lower. It could million. be one ohm or zero point one. Charles Robbins is a part of one year old okay. fireman. His wife was Any questions? Say they have a combined annual income of fifty one thousand dollars. Okay. According to our research, um, Mr. Robbins. Okay, I got a question from Adam about how they how do they ensure the division is not more than ten percent? Yeah, they do that using voltage regulators. Uh, like those voltage regulators, and we will learn they uh, change the transformer turns ratio. Okay, apparently, and how to uh, increase the output voltage of the transformer and still or decrease it in order to make sure that the voltage across the load is. Uh, is not deviating uh, much. Okay. This is something I'm going to explain in details. And by the way, the project that you will uh, 
that you will know. Do uh, has a component or has a question about voltage regulation. Um, uh, there is a question from Ali about wouldn't that grounding wire give an easier path to ground for the high voltage lines as well? No, Ali, like this wire is not um, is not carrying voltage. So here, look, if you have a generator, it should be worth more than three million. The generator is three phase, like this. How long do you think of trash? So phase A, let's say, is, is 100. I want to make it simple, 120 volts. Phase B is the same, 120 volts. Phase C is 120 volts. The ground wire is here. Is, is from this point. This is the ground wire. We have developed several the voltage of the ground wire is here. Okay. So this ground wire, like if you look at this figure, the ground wire is not connected to the phases. So we have A, B, and C. This is ground. It is not connected. There, are, there is no connection between A and B uh, or C and then the ground wire. It is isolated. It's, it's a different wire and the voltage of this ground wire is, is, is theoretically zero. If 41 year old makes 140,000 a year, and this ground wire should be connected also. This is the point should be connected to the grounding mesh, the grounding mesh under the substation. So there is a ground, there is like many rods, and, and there is a network under the substation to make sure that the grounding resistance is very low under the substation to ensure safety. So if there is a lightning strike here, it will go from the ground wire to the mesh under the substation, and everything will be dissipated. So instead of dissipating the power of light through the equipment, through the transformer, the, the insulators, no, we're going to provide a, a shorter path, a path with low resistance to the lightning to, to dissipate its power. And safely and without equipment. damaging any equipment. Are you PAW or uh, GAW or okay. just um, AAW? AAW is average okay. as a okay. um, We have developed a to be well positioned in the PAW category. You should be worth twice the uh, No, um, for, for telecommunication, we use uh, like well should be we can use twice uh, the, expected the power line itself, phase A, B, and C to or to transfer communication signals because you know communication signals by two equals uh are one million at two high frequency and low voltage magnitude low voltage magnitude to seven million okay so we can use the line itself to conversely to transfer communication signals that is they are the best okay let's move to the presentation Okay, um, in substations, as I told you, we have transformers, step up, step down. This is the texture of the transformer. As you can see, we have insulators. We cannot connect the wire directly to the body of the transformer. We cannot connect the power line directly to the body of the transformer as if using like a screw. No, it won't work. Okay. We have to use insulators. So this power line. Mr. Miller Baba is connected to the, to the uh, transformer the using the insulators to make sure that there is no of a mobile uh, dealership. There is no uh, there is no, there is no uh, short path or short circuit. Uh, this is a high voltage guys. So and this is metal. I mean the the, the body of the transformer. So if, if the insulator is not well uh, designed, then we will have a short circuit here. So you will see like light, like, um, what they call, um, sparks or, like, something like this, 
and uh, you will see you will see you will see the connection to the, to the body of the channel. Here we have surge arresters. And if you look here at this cable, it is not uh, like a naked cable. It is covered by some sort of plastic or insulation. Again, this is extra protection. Extra protection to make sure that there is no connection between the line and the body of the transformer. The transformers are three phase. One of the major we have A and B and C. We have circuit breakers. I told you about them. Those devices are capable of disconnecting or connecting the circuit when there is a load. Okay. We have the ability to extinguish any sparks or any we would expect uh, that more than half a million million population would be any current okay this is uh, that 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 so happens due to uh, uh, the high voltage uh, when a pulse ha when, when 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 we disconnect the circuit so any power circuit has an induction as I told you before and imagine we have a switch this switch represents the circuit okay the current uh, is close to the rated value or could be higher than that during pulse. So if we have a pulse here, this, this is a short circuit. The current here, the current through the line, could be five times, five to ten times the rated current. So if the rated current, let's say, is 10 kilo amps, the fourth current could be 100 kilo amps. Ten times the rate of the ten point three, and 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 any power uh, uh, line or any power circuit has an inductance L, and we know that the voltage is equal to the voltage across this inductance is L V I by G T. In other words, this group. So if you want to drop this current from ten times, ten times or five times the rate of power to zero. In no time, okay, the voltage you get here between the, the term of the circuit breaker will be close to infinity. So you try to, 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 to disconnect the, 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 the circuit, but it's not the voltage between the terminals of the circuit breaker is infinity, it will break down, it will break down the air of this to uh, uh, the air surrounding the switch. So we cannot use a typical switch. Okay. We cannot use a typical switch. We need to use a circuit breaker. This circuit breaker is capable of this connection. The circuit it has a special material inside. This could be SFX circuit breaker. Okay. Or a vacuum circuit breaker. First Europeans to so inside the circuit breaker we have over, nothing inside the ground floor. Why? Because if if, if, if there is like if the if there is vacuum, like I don't want to say vacuum, but if there is nothing, if, if, if the vacuum is inside the circuit breaker, then there won't be any electrons to transfer the current. So when we disconnect the circuit breaker, it will be safe. It will be safe and we can isolate the circuit. Most American millionaires okay. today. So there are different types of circuit breakers, different ratings, depending on, of course, the power and the voltage that, that is completely uh, dissipated. That is, of course, the, the terminals of the circuit breaker. The American economy is okay. do it one. Um, we have capacitor banks. I gave, I gave you an example in the previous lecture about capacitor banks and their role to correct the power factor. And these two pictures shows, show, I mean, the, the capacitor banks here, they can, use, they can be used to uh, correct the power factor. They can be used to regulate the voltage. How can we regulate the voltage using capacitor banks? We know when we have capacitors close to the load, we reduce that reactive power, so the reactive power supply will drop. Okay. Okay. So this will reduce the voltage drop because if we have it, use one node. If we have a circuit like this, and we have one node, and this is one voltage source, and this is the current. The current.
is equal to the voltage divided by the impedance. And the impedance here, we have the impedance of the line. Let's, let's make it just X, X line plus the impedance of the load. And this load has a resistance, R load, plus JX load. And when we add the capacitor band across the load, then we add a negative term here, negative JX capacitor. Hello, so this will direct, uh, as I told you, this will uh, reduce the reactive power flow, so Q here, so Q from the source, Q source, will drop, okay. and as a result, the current also will drop, because the current is basically is equal to P, the power. I think this example could be a little bit confusing. So let's begin in a different way. Because most of the loads uh, consume power, not just uh, represented by an impedance. This, this could be a little bit confusing, as you will know later. So this load consumes P. And okay, so the current is equal. I mean, the magnitude of the current is equal to the power, the magnitude of, of uh, the power, which is P load squared plus Q load over V. Okay. So as we decrease, uh, as we decrease that the, the reactive power from the source by adding by supplying uh, reactive power locally, then we will decrease the current. And when we decrease the current, here this is negative Q capacitor. Q load minus Q cap, and this is a square. So by installing a capacitor bank, we decrease the current, and as a result, the voltage drop across the line, delta V, the voltage drop, which is equal to X line times I. This will also drop. So instead of having a voltage of, let's say, 90% across the load, when we connect capacitors, the voltage can can increase or will increase by, uh, let's say, 5% or 10%. It depends on how much uh, the capacitance is and uh, and the, the, the power rating of the load. So the capacitors can be used to... Um, to compensate for under voltages. Capacitors cannot, cannot reduce the voltage. Cannot reduce the voltage. So if we have an over voltage, then capacitors will make the problem worse. Make the problem worse because capacitors always increase the voltage. Always increase the voltage, not decrease the voltage. Okay. So by adding capacitor, then we can increase the voltage using capacitor. Let me see if, if I got some questions. Okay, so this is for uh, the capacitor main. We use it to, we can use it to correct the power factor. We can use it to regulate the voltage and we can use capacitors also to smooth the voltage across the load. If we have a nonlinear load, like a load with thyristors or power electronic converters connected to our supply, the voltage here will be distorted. We will not have a pure sine wave like this. Okay. 
So the wallfish will have some ripples. So this happens when we have nonlinear loop. Or like power electronic based plates. When we add capacitors in parallel with those loads, they filter the voltage. They filter the voltage. Why? Because these uh, distorted voltages, if we apply real transfer, uh, if we apply free tra transfer uh, or free series, we can have a low signal, a low, a low frequency signal plus high frequency signals. They, we call them harmonics. And this, capaci this capacitor has a low impedance to high frequency signals. We know that X of the capacitor is equal to one over omega C. So when we increase the frequency, the reactance, the reactance of this capacitor of this capacitor will be very low. And it could be a short circuit if the frequency is very high. So it will not allow any harmonics, it will absorb any harmonics and filter the voltage. So we can use capacitor banks to smooth voltages. Smooth out the voltage with smooth. Um, now let's talk about power distribution. Again, I will be talking about the substation. Uh, the, the figure quality is not good. I hope you can see all the terminologies. This is the best figure I could find. Uh, but again, in the heart of the substation, we have the transformer, uh, we have lightning canisters, uh, we have uh, switches here, okay, and this is air brake switches, again, because, look here, the size of the substation here is uh, smaller, because in distribution system or uh, distribution substations are dealing with low power, uh, coming from the system, also low voltage or medium voltage. As we decrease the voltage, we'll decrease the size of insulators. And as we decrease the power, we decrease the size of conductors, the size of transformers, and so on. So you can see now, this substation is not uh, big as compared to substations at the transmission level. But the components are pretty much uh, the same. We have incoming sub-transmission lines, okay, at medium voltage or high voltage. We have outgoing distribution lines at medium voltage, low voltage. We have in the heart, the transformer. Uh, we have distribution buses to connect to the distribution system, to different feeders. So we have different primary feeders like this and to supply different districts, different sub-urban areas in a city like this. All these feeders coming out from here, different uh, cables or overhead lines. We have the control house, a very small one. Uh, and the power, as I told you, is all in one direction. From the, the customers here and the distribution system are passive customers. They do not generate electricity. They, they, uh, they buy electricity. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Again, if we look here at the components, um, we have uh, mainly customers to serve. We have single phase customers, three phase customers, we have transformers, we have feeders. Those feeders can be overhead or underground. Okay. We call them feeders because they feed our customers. They feed our customers. As I told you, the, body, uh, the power flow is unidirectional from the substation to the loop. We have switches. We can have also circuit breakers. Circuit breakers. Especially at the medium voltage especially at the medium voltage, with feeders, okay? 
But when we approach customers, we mainly use fuses to isolate uh, faulty circuits. So if we have a medium voltage meter like this, we can use a circuit breaker. But when we, uh, for, for laterals, I mean the, the cable that supply different streets, different areas, we can just use fuse. So fuses can thread and disconnect circuits when there is a, a full circuit. Like if there's a full circuit here, if someone like by mistake connected uh, or uh, connected a heavy load or created a short circuit during maintenance or during construction, then the fuse will trip. But the fuse does cannot be uh, cannot be restored. So it disconnects the circuit and a technician or a crew has to go to the fuse location and replace it. So it cannot be used multiple times. Okay, but circuit breakers, they disconnect the, the circuit, and then after the fault is clear, we can connect the circuit again. We don't need to replace circuit breakers. And as you expect, circuit breakers are more expensive uh, than fuses, but again, uh, they are more reliable, they are accommodated or connected to protection relays. That is why they are expensive. You have to tune the, the protection relay, coordinate the protection relays uh, in order to ensure reliability and sensitivity. Circuit breakers, uh, oh, sorry, the fuses uh, do, not, do not have this flexibility. They are manufactured in order to uh, disconnect the circuit when there is a fault, and that's it. There is no uh, smart protection behind the fuse. It, is, it works based on the overcurrent, the thermal energy uh, generated when uh, high currents flow through them. That's it. Okay? That is why we have to replace them. We have to replace them. They are, they are cheap, uh, but uses, again, they increase the duration of interruption. They increase the duration of interruption because someone has to, to locate the fuse, replace it, and so on. Uh, protection relays are used with circuit breakers. We have lightning arresters, we discussed them before, we have current transformers or voltage transformers. So potential transformers or voltage transformers. So like previously or maybe long time ago, voltage transformers, I mean the the, 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 the equipment or devices used to measure the voltage, they were called potential transformers. Nowadays, most of the literature they use voltage transformer instead of potential transformer. But if you read it in a textbook, you have to know that the potential transformer is uh, is a voltage transformer, both used uh, to measure the voltage. Uh, we have smaller transformers, uh, 10 kilo volt amp up to 100 kilo volt amp. As you can see, the power range here is very low as compared to the transmission system, which is in mega volt amp. Okay. They can be uh, full mounted, as you can see, or mounted on ground. Okay, so they decrease the voltage from medium voltage, let's say 11 kilovolt, uh, 33 kilovolt, significantly, because 25 percent, uh, 25 percent of the energy consumed in can in, in Canada. Is related to transportation. I'm, I'm talking here. I'm not talking about electricity consumption. I'm talking about the energy as an as energy, uh, whether it is thermal, electricity, and, and so on. So 25% is related to transportation. This number could be a little bit high, but if we use electric vehicles, then we will have a heavy load. We will add a heavy load to our distribution system. And here, the residential will increase. Or this actually this. Uh, Fine chart will increase in size. So instead of let's say 481, it should reach 600 terawatt hour. And the percent, the percentage of the residential, commercial will change, will change depending on the chargers connected 
to different areas. So we will have residential chargers and commercial chargers. So the transportation, which is 1% now, this could be 25% in the future, 10, 10 years from now. Okay. Those figures are updated, especially because there is interest from the government uh, and auto uh, uh, manufacturers to uh, produce electric vehicles. So not only for for resident for for private use uh, usage, but also on the in, in public uh, transport and in other areas, even for trucks. So uh, our distribution system and our transmission system will be overloaded. And now, nowadays, our system planners try to set, you know, uh, plans to update the system infrastructure and increase the, the transformer ratings by by five by fifty percent, or install multiple um, feeders, medium voltage feeders, to accommodate the increase, the expected increase in the residential load and also commercial load, okay? Like with the current infrastructure, the system cannot supply electric vehicles, maybe at low percentage or at, at a low penetration level, 5%, something like that. But when the penetration increases to 25%, the system infrastructure will not be able to supply it. We have to add new feeders, transformers, come up with uh, new charging uh, or smart charging to, uh, strategies to, or, to coordinate or, uh, you know, uh, manage different charging profiles, uh, charge electric vehicles during peak uh, off peak times and so on. Now let's talk about the, the conventional loads. We have, as I told you, industrial, residential, and commercial. These are the three bulk loads we have. Every load has its own characteristic. It has, like, in, for industrial, the peak power happens before noon, and there is a break here. During the break, the load decreases a little bit, but then we have another peak afternoon until, you know, laborers uh, leave uh, the factories and, and, and industrial facilities. Okay, for commercial, again, most of the commercial customers, uh, malls, uh, stores, uh, they operate from, let's say, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. So the peak is happening in the middle. For residential customers, typically the load is not high until the customers go back or return from work. Then they start using their appliances, stove, uh, uh, air conditioner, and so on. So the peak happens after 6 p.m. till, let's say, uh, 11 or 10 p.m. Okay. So when we add these three loads together, we end up getting this profile uh, for uh, the power demand of a city. And this is something, by the way, you can check if you go to ISO. So let me try to go here. ISO uh, or so file power man. You can actually get a lot of data and see the power profile the real in real time. Okay, so as you can see, the peak happens around 6 p.m. We have another peak here. Uh, or almost constant, this is due to industrial and commercial loads. But before 6 a.m., the load is very low. So electric vehicles can be charged residentially or residential electric vehicles can be charged here. Uh, we can accommodate high penetration levels because the peak is, happens after 7 a.m. I mean, I mean the, the, the curve starts to, to, to ramp up. Okay. But if we have commercial electric, uh, commercial chargers, you know, chargers and parking lots, 
uh, we have charging stations, you know, uh, in highways, fast chargers. Those fast chargers can, can, can actually produce a peak load uh, in, 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 uh, like in any time during the daytime, like, or maybe at night. So this is something that power system planners, researchers, they are studying and trying to make the system ready for the expected jump in, in, in electric vehicles. But again, this is the hard profile that you can, uh, it, that you may use in the project. And in the project, I will ask you to use the power profile from ISO uh, and try to see how the voltage changes in, a, in, a, in, in, in the power system under study. So here, the, volt, the, the power uh, starts at low value and then increases step by step. So you can get the percentage uh, of this power and uh, plot, your, uh, plot your voltage and of course study the system here. Okay, so if you look here, this is the typical power profile. We have the base load, which remains always constant. So this is the base load, and I discussed with you before that this base load has to be supplied by the cheapest power plants, hydro power plants, nuclear power plants, because they are constant. Like here, you just need to set your nuclear power plant to supply this base power. The remaining uh, layers of the power profile, this is the percentage of the power versus time, uh, we can start step by step. As the power increases, we uh, we uh, activate maybe the next uh, the, the 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 steam based parts, which are expensive but not as expensive as the uh, gas based tur uh, turbines or power plants. So we activate we we rely first on the cheapest power plants and then go to the next power plants, which are a little bit expensive and during the peak time, we use the most expensive power plants. Why? Because they can, they can, we can easily start them and disconnect them. We can start them easily and shut them uh, down easily. As you can see, there is a lot of variation during the peak time to the intermediate stage and, of course, the base uh, power, which is constant. Okay. Any questions? Can see if you if you have any questions saying this is blackboard i'm gonna go back here okay no questions now let's talk about our system operation and control uh, the key operational goal uh, or key operational goals in any power system is to keep a power balance so the generation should be equal to the demand plus losses the losses here are uh, the power dissipated in the transmission system and distribution system. We have lines, we have transformers, and all these equipment are not uh, ideal. They are not 100% efficient, so they consume power. Okay? So the total generation should be equal to the power demand plus losses. Otherwise, the frequency will not be constant. So the first objective is to balance the generation with the load or the demand plus losses. If we don't reach this balance, the frequency will be variable and the power system will collapse. This is number one priority. The second priority is to um, make sure that the system uh, is not overloaded. We comply with the system constraints. So uh, equipment power flows must not exceed equipment ratings. We cannot overload transformers. It will get heated and this will impact the lifetime of transformer. If a cable is overloaded, then also it will be trapped. Uh, we have to make sure that equipments are running uh, safely without any overload. So here the voltage should be uh, within limits and also the current should be within limits. Okay. Uh, these are the power quality considerations. Uh, frequency regulation, we have to keep the frequency constant. This is happening inside the power plant. There is a governor. Uh, this governor controls the speed of the turbine. 
uh, and make sure that the, the, the mechanical speed is constant and regulated. And this happens by controlling the output and input power. So the mechanical power should be equal to the electrical power. When the electrical power is higher than the mechanical power, the frequency will drop. And when the mechanical power is higher than the electrical power, the frequency will increase. This is an acceleration. If you apply the Newton second law, you can understand that easily. Okay. So the governor, which is a, a regulator, a controller to control the speed, uh, you know, uh, uh, governs or regulates the speed in order to balance the mechanical and electrical power. This is basically to achieve this objective. The generation represents the mechanical power of the turbine, and the demand represents the electrical power of our loads. Uh, the current should be within limits, as I mentioned before. The current of all devices should be within limits, be lower than I maximum or I rated, should be lower than or equal. Um, the voltage uh, should be with the limits, this is plus or minus 5% deviation. In some areas, we allow up to 10% deviation. It depends, of course, on the investments. Uh, if we are supplying the rural areas or urban areas and, and, and so on. But 10% is not that bad. Like, it's okay. But uh, again, we try to do our best uh, within the budget, within the the. the economical constraints or the budget constraints. So these are two main objectives, frequency regulation, voltage regulation. We want to make sure that this, any equipment in the system is running safely without any overload. Okay. Um, for that, we can use centralized controllers. So we receive measurements from different substations, from different power plants, and all information, all data uh, is transferred to a central control unit in order to dispatch uh, the power uh, to run the system uh, in an optimized way. This is called centralized and wide area. Uh, this is centralized control, which requires wide area data. What I mean by wide here, the data is, tra is traveled uh, or travels over long distances, 100 kilometers. We have decentralized. This is based on local data. So, and, and decentralized is very fast. This is slow. So, uh, but for centralized control, we can optimize the system operation. Okay. For decentralized, it is fast, but we cannot do optimization. We uh, use it. Uh, in protection to have fast traction. So most of the relays are decentralized. Most of the, of the relays are decentralized. Or even if they use communication, they use low bandwidth communication and fast communication with fiber optics. So in protection, we need decentralized uh, we need decentralized action or decentralized control. But during normal conditions, during normal conditions, when everything is, is okay, we can have a slow controller, but this slow control controller runs optimization algorithms to make sure that the cost or if the cost is minimum, the profit is maximum. And of course, we have to comply with the system constraints, frequency, voltage, and current. Um, here are some examples for the centralized controls. We use SCADA systems, uh, energy management systems uh, here. The resolution is every 10 minutes. We get data or every five minutes, it depends. Sometimes every hour. So different resolutions. So this is uh, the frequency of taking actions using centralized controls. Um, okay. But for the decentralized, it is every millisecond. The, 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 it, is, it is very fast. We use it mainly for protection, or we can use it also for voltage uh, regulation for some sensitive equipment, okay? Uh, or for example, like, like for example, the, for example, I mean, the controllers used, used for power electronics converters. Okay, those controllers are decentralized. 
this because they have to do the job we have they have to regulate their, their, their variables in a quick way like i mean the frequency the speed the voltage the current and so on okay so this ends uh, this part this ends i mean the the background uh, needed uh, for power system components transmission and distribution uh, I was planning to discuss with you, I mean, the basics of three phase uh, circuits in today's lecture, but you know, the time is almost over. We have only three minutes. So I'm not going to start a new topic uh, now. I'm not going to talk about three phase systems. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, so there is a question from Luke about what happens, for example, when the grid is oversupplied with excessive power. Yeah, um, in this case, the frequency will increase. But again, the system, as I told you, the system is interconnected and we have centralized controllers. So the, the generators, let me go back to my notes. Let's say we have a power system like this. And we have different generators. Like and we have different, of course, loads. We have a centralized controller here. This is a centralized controller that gathers data, why data, like from different generators and different loads. If one load, if one load is driven, if the power of one load is dropping like this, then this centralized controller would know the trend. And as a result, it will decrease, it will send like signals to the power plants. We have power plants here to decrease its power. Okay, so this centralized controller will make sure that the power from generators is equal to the power of the load or the demand plus losses. You know, every every power plant is connected to the central control unit, to the power system operator database. They are not, you know, working uh, in isolation or they are not isolated. I'm not talking here uh, about a remote community or an isolated uh, facility. No, this, the interconnected power system is uh, is under control, and every power here, how the power from the generator can be regulated. Of course, we cannot regulate the we cannot regulate the majority of the loads. Most of the loads are not regulated. The loads are like to this central controller, the loads are disturbance. They change, and we have to control the, part, the output power from the power plants to accommodate the load changes. How does the frequency vary based on the magnitude of the load supply? Um, this, yeah, this is related to, this is a good question. This is related to the, the, the power plant itself. Like in any generator, we have a generator, right? Like this is the generator and this generator has an output power, which is electrical and an input mechanical power, which is EM, okay? The acceleration, of the speed, this is actually the rotor, the rotor of the generator. Okay, so the acceleration of the rotor depends on the difference between the mechanical and electrical power. Okay, so if the electrical load increases, then this rotor will 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 decelerate. This is related to Newton's second law of motion. Okay. And when the rotor decelerates, the, 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 the mechanical speed, which is proportional to that frequency, will decrease because we have deceleration. This is why the frequency is, um, is affiliated or related to the, uh, the, the electrical uh, load. Uh, I think, yeah, the time is over now. I hope. Uh, this answers uh, your question, uh, Ali. And yeah, if, if you have any further questions, we can uh, always talk. I have office hours uh, today. Uh, we can.
can have a discussion about how power plants and how the frequency is related to power system, uh, power systems, uh, loads, and, and etc. Okay, guys, uh, have a good day and stay.